with authority. Welcome everybody. It's 2021 and we continue with our with authority quarantine podcast series from the San Jose Sharks. Mr. Teal himself, Patrick Marlowe. Uh, Patrick, first, thanks for your time. Let's start with your location because as we speak, you're in a hotel room in Arizona, which is your extended home away from home for who knows how long because of the restrictions in Santa Clara County. So what are the challenges that you're facing right now? Just kind of being a an Arizona resident, I guess, for the time being. Well, just, uh, you know, the main thing being away from family and um, that's probably the, the toughest part. But uh, yeah, being in our different surroundings in our hotel room and, and practicing here. So um, just just trying to get used to it and trying to keep uh, stay safe and, and do all the right things. So, uh, you know, we don't uh, catch COVID and, uh, you know, put ourselves behind the, the eight ball. The fact that you don't know how long you're going to be down there, does that weigh on your mind or does that impact the team in any way? Kind of, I mean, nobody's going to have home ice advantage without fans anyway for an extended period of time. So you're just, you're on another sheet of ice in a different rink, but still I'm sure the lack of familiarity with the surroundings and settings has, has, has got to be disorienting to some extent. Yeah, it's it, like you said, it's going to be weird enough as it is with, uh, you know, not, not having uh, fans in the, in the buildings and, and, and things like that like that and being on the road so uh you no know, we're uh we're hope hopeful and hopefully we can get back to the bay area and, and get back to our facilities and uh uh you know the team's working really hard and making sure that everything's in place that uh that we can do that and uh i think they have a, a meeting coming up here soon so hopefully they they uh, they grant us permission to come back and uh, you know we'll we'll do everything we can uh everything by the book so uh, we can keep uh, keep everybody safe yeah, I mean, speaking of things you're going to be without, the facilities, the fans, et cetera, how hard is it to be away from your family right now? I know that must be really tough hold up in the hotel room in Arizona and, you know, practicing with your team. I would imagine a lot of Zoom calls like this are going on. Yeah, there's there's a lot of Zoom calls. There's a lot of uh, uh, playing uh, game pigeon with my with my youngest son, and he's on <laughs> – so I'm watching him uh, just, you know, either he'll be playing a game or I'm on FaceTime or, you know, just, they kind of just set me down on the, on the dinner table, whatever it is, but, uh, you, you get what you can. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's hard on them as well. So, uh, you know, we just got to talk, talk, talk through it and uh, make the best of, of uh, the situation. Now I've heard that uh, story about DoorDash and I know a lot of the guys in your are having to DoorDash a lot of meals. And, and I was told that whenever you're doing this, your wife's phone number is on the account. So can you take me through a little bit about the, uh, <laughs> the troubles of getting a meal right now for you? Uh, yeah, there's uh, we, we share the same account. So I'll, I'll order some food and uh, she'll be getting all the texts like I am up front or I, I can't find you. And <laughs> so that, that happened a few times. And I'm like, okay, next time I'm going to be down there waiting for them, make sure they, they don't text and bugger. And of course, uh, that's the time that the dasher got, uh, he got lost. So he had the, he had the call. <laughs> and then, uh, the other time when you have to switch the, the address. So I switched the address, put in my, my, my order, but I forgot to switch it back to, to their address. So my boys got on there and I think they ordered some five guys and put in the order. And <laughs> so I ended up, uh, with a couple of shakes and a couple of burgers the one day <laughs> that, that I didn't order that. <laughs> <laughs> they were supposed to be for my for my kids, but uh, they, they they still found a home. <laughs> what are some of like the most popular choices right now, food wise, for you guys? I know with all the door dashing going on. Uh, for me, it's uh, True Food Kitchen's been uh, been really key. I think there's a lot of Chipotle, uh, some room service, but uh, yeah, I think uh, those, some chop shop salad places. So it's, it's uh, there's some really good food uh, restaurants out here. Patrick, uh, we thank you for doing this. I, I got to ask you, what excites you most about this season in a year where we don't know what's going to happen at all? Um, probably, yeah, that, that's the, the uncertainty of what, what's going to happen and how things are going to unfold. But uh, I think the biggest thing is probably the start. Uh, it's going to be a sprint. It's going to be, you know, a really competitive hockey right from the start. And I think that's, uh, that's going to be really exciting to, to be part of. And uh, one of our uh, producers here is a huge Sharks fan, and he wanted me to just straight up ask you, uh, your Hall of Fame resume, I know you're a humble guy, but uh, what would it mean for you to get there, and why do you believe you're a Hall of Famer? I think we all know it, but uh, why do you believe you are? 
<laughs> oh boy, uh, I I just go about my business, uh, whatever I can do to help help the team win. I know it's all everybody says the same thing, but uh, that's that's trying to just keep a small focus and um, you know if the, if those accolades come, then uh, you know be really really excited about them. But uh, you know you don't get to to a point or play this long in a, in a career without uh, having support of your family and uh, playing for great organizations. Um, having great training staffs, great coaching. Um, and you, you get to meet all these great people along the way. I think that's probably the, the, the key takeaway from all this. You, you get to meet uh, friends that you're going to have for the rest of your life, people you can you know call on uh, at any time, and uh, they'll be there for you. Well, you mentioned longevity. Uh, we should put it into context for people who may not know. But back in 1997, you started your career with the San Jose Sharks, and here we are. You're now age 41 and back for the third stint with the San Jose Sharks. You own pretty much all the significant team records in terms of goals and shots and games played and so on and so forth. Uh, we, we could probably do 30 minutes just on the records that you hold. <laughs> but at age 41, you look around the, the locker room there and there's teammates who were not born when you started your NHL career. I see you got a little stubble going i was going to ask if you you're teaching them how to shave yet but i'm not sure you're shaving yourself uh i still you know i still love training i still love uh, practicing and love the games um and ultimately it, it's uh for me i'm still chasing that uh, that cup and, and and wanting to win so uh and now uh you know being able to help guys come up through the through the ranks like guys did for for me uh early on that you know you take uh you take some pride in that as well and um, try and pass on some knowledge and and try and learn some stuff from the, the new kids. I think they're they're coming up uh, differently than what what I did. So you know we're talking <laughs> longevity. Um, you know I'm 38. I jumped off a cliff in Lake Tahoe and my butt hurt for two weeks. So like what what is the secret to longevity? <laughs> staying staying in shape, staying healthy. Like is it stretching? Is it is it Pilates, yoga, weight training? Like what's the thing that you like to do the most that kind of you feel has helped extend your career to this point? Oh boy, there's. Uh, I'm always looking for new things or trying new things. Um, right now, I ha I have a grounding sheet on my bed. Uh, I did it away. Uh, did it a while ago, but I'm doing it again. Just uh, that's one of the new things. Uh, grounding. Uh, you know, we got massage therapists. We have uh, acupuncturists. People that we usually get to see throughout the season. I don't know how we're going to do it this year, but uh, you know, a lot of people, chiropractors, a lot of things that uh, that help you know, your, your body and help keep you in line and, and everything like that. And while well, workouts, uh, Mike Potenza has been, been working out with him for a number of years and he, we're, he's always pushing the envelope, uh, trying new things, uh, you know, different, different supplements and eating healthy. And it's just a combination of all those things. And you kind of take bits and pieces where you can, and if it works for you, then you just stick with it. What, what is a grounding sheet? Is it like a, like a heavily weighted blanket or something you tie down or how, well, what is that? Uh, so grounding or earthing, they call it. So you put, you plug it into the, the grounded, uh, outlet and it's supposed to, uh, uh help, uh, with inflammation in your body. And, and you just kind of lay on that. There's, uh, I think, I don't know what the, the threads are or a graphite or something that conducts the earth, earth, earth energy or, um, but it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. There's some few documentaries on it and, uh, just giving it a shot. I think that's really interesting. I've never even heard of that before this. So we're learning together even, yeah. even with the Zoom connection. Um, I have to ask, you know, every time you've been with the Sharks and you've been with the Sharks for many years and then you've left and come back, et cetera. But uh, Joe Thornton's been a steady presence here. So what kind of, you know, uh, leadership, what kind of qualities are we, we going to not see now? And how are you going to make up for those without him? I think, uh, you know, obviously it's hard to, to replicate what Joe brought, obviously, on and off the ice. But uh, I think having had him here, guys who have been around, I think one of the bi biggest things that I know I've taken away is, like, uh, how when it comes to time for the game to play, he's, he's ready to go and uh, he's all in. Uh, but when the game's over, he's, he's, uh, he's good at taking the good and learning from it and, and just moving on. I think that's one of the, the key things that especially young guys and even old guys can, can learn is once that game's over, you you know, you kind of park it and you take what you can from it, but uh, don't let it snowball in, you know, don't just keep overthinking it and over analyzing it. And that was, uh, that was one of the things that uh, I think Jumbo helped, helped me with. 
Patrick, how long are you guys prepared to be in Arizona? I know you said that they were having some meetings and we all hope you get back to the tank. And obviously the long-term goal is hope with fans or limited fans, but how long are you prepared to be out there? And what, what can you tell us about that situation in Arizona right now? The way they set it up, you know, hopefully we can get back as soon as possible, but uh, we don't really know. We're just kind of playing it by, by ear here. And um, if we can uh, get through this month, uh, you know, playing all our road games and uh, get off to a good start, that'd be great. And, to, and then have uh, that little cherry on top to be able to, to come home and, and uh, see our families would be great. And as Larry and Casey have mentioned, we like to have fun on this podcast. So Logan Couture was on here. We talked about goal songs and I was doing some research on you and it seemed at first you didn't have a goal song and your wife maybe submitted uh, wheels on the bus. Did that ever play or what is your goal song? <laughs> Did you, I'm sure you know uh, about, all about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, uh, it never played, uh, unfortunately, but, uh, <laughs> I might, I might have to revisit it and see, I got a few, there's a few different people in my ear child telling me what to, what to put out there, but, uh, yeah, I'll ha- hopefully we'll, it'll play a lot this year. That'd be great. <laughs> I, I want to go back to this grounding thing. Um, was this, <laughs> you know, so you plug it into the wall and then you lay out this, I, I don't know. Is this like a 2 a.m. QVC purchase? I mean, where did this come from? <laughs> no, um, I, it's probably one of the things I, I talked to uh, our Mikey Tenza about it. Um, I think actually the the Tour de France, a lot of the, a lot of the cyclists on the Tour de France, uh, they use it for recovery during the their hard stages and things like that. I just I just learned that out there. There's a few documentaries about it and uh, there's a lot of research behind it, 20 years of research on it. So uh, I think, uh, I think there's definitely something to it. So do you feel less inflamed? Is that, I mean, can you tell that there's a difference or mind over matter kind of thing? What, what are you thinking? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, for me personally, I've, I've felt ever since I started doing it, I feel good, feel great. Uh, you jump out of bed and um, I don't know if it's, placebo or what but uh the body's been feeling really good doing it so i'll I'll continue to do it all right i might have to buy one of these grounding things (laughs) (laughs) i've got nothing but inflammation here so that's uh, that's, i could be a case study obviously nobody is as uniquely qualified as you are to kind of analyze this shark squad and roster you've been a part of you know the very very highs of sharks hockey um, so where do you think you guys are at at this point? I mean, the season for us, it, it's almost like it's sneaking up on us. It's coming quick and you guys are in training cramp and, and here we are, we're right about to get going. So, uh, you know, what are your, your impressions of this squad and your teammates as you guys get ready to start here this week? Uh, I think we, we got a lot of great players. I think, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, good young guys that are coming up and, you know, super fast, super skilled. Um, obviously our, our defense is, is really solid. So, I think the the main thing that's gonna, you know, dictate on on how good we do this year is uh, how quickly we get out into uh, playing our system. Our, you know, everybody getting on board with that. But uh, you know, it's the little details in the mm-hmm. game that that's gonna make us uh, win or lose games. So I think if we can do that right away, because I know there's gonna be, you know, we haven't had that much time to to get ready, and a lot of teams are all in the same boat and haven't have a, had such a long layoff. So anybody, if the team that can get dialed in and, and starts playing that team game right away, can rack up those wins. That's, that's going to go a, a long way this season. And, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, to doing that. What do you think the, uh, you know, the biggest strength of the team is coming into this season right now? I think our, our defense, uh, you know, you look at, you got Burns, Vlasic, Carlson on the back end, um, you know, and you got the healthy, I guess probably the biggest thing is, Healthy now. We got Cooch healthy. We got the Hurdle health. Um, Carlson healthy. Patrick, if you can hear me, uh, you, you talk about the cup, and that's I'm sure why you're still playing. So, what would it mean to you to to hold the hoist the cup, have your name engraved, and what would you do with it if you happen to win it? Like, there's always these epic stories about the cup. So, what would you do with the Stanley Cup? Uh boy. Um, yeah, no, it, it would ultimate goal. I mean, I've been ever since I knew what it was, I wanted to win it, and you know being here in San Jose for as long as I have and knowing the fan base and, you know, everybody's wanting to, to win and, and uh, have our names put on that cup uh, for such a long time. would be, be great for the, for the Bay area, be great for our team or organization, but uh, it'd be, it'd be the ultimate. And uh, I think what I would do, I'd probably have to, I'd probably have to take 
I would take it home to, you know, where I grew up uh, and, and share it with, with everybody there and probably have to hop on a flight and share it with everybody in San Jose as well, too. So it'd be a, it'd be a long day, but uh, it'd be well worth it. And I just saw the NHL put out today that they're going to have games in, in Tahoe, a couple at least. Um, what have you thought about the NHL's growth over the last decade here in the States and, and the outdoor games? Do you like those? Yeah, they're, uh, they're fun to be involved in. I think there's there's such a big uh, buildup and I know the, all behind the scenes and everything. So it, it's given uh, the fans definitely a behind the scenes look and, and uh, you know, given different venues. And I think that they've done really well. I think the NHL's did a really good job of, you know, trying to build it uh, through these, these events. Um, one last thing here, um, since you've been around for a while, if you could be Gary Bettman for a day and change one rule in hockey, what <laughs> would you change? I really don't know what I, what I would change. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think the changes that they put in place to make the game a lot faster and uh, took away the hooking and holding allowed the, uh, you know, a lot of speed and skill to come out in the game. So uh, uh, I'm sure there's something that I'm missing, but uh, right now, you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool game to be part of with the, with the speed and skill that's involved. For sure. Especially for somebody like yourself, who's always been known for his speed. I uh, want to thank you for your time because I know it's uh, it's like a sprint. You know, normally you would have maybe four to six weeks to get ready for a season. This is more like two to three weeks from, you know, from when they gave you the thumbs up. So, uh, best of luck in Arizona. Stay healthy, and if you could pass on your DoorDash account to the rest of us, um, that would be <laughs> awesome. Because uh, <laughs> these guys get very hungry. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And right. or where we can buy the grounding, because I know Larry is ready to purchase that thing right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I got it. I think I got it on longevity.com, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go look for that immediately. <laughs> yeah. get the, let's get rid of that inflammation. Uh, Patrick, thanks so much for your time. Take care. With authority.